All right, so the inspector was just here. We had him looking over the plans with us and checked out uh, the rebar grid, the footing, all that. And yeah, we passed. We made it through inspection for the footing. I was a little worried because we did have some heavy rain over the weekend. And some of that, as you can see, the hillside caved in a little bit right there, kind of filled up. So I had to scoop that out before the inspector got here. But other than that, he said everything looked great. We're ready for concrete. So uh, I'm gonna make the order for that concrete so we can get this foundation poured and uh, get back to rolling on this project. <laughs> All right, what is going on everybody and welcome back to this build series. This is Tim O'Dell with O'Dell Complete Concrete and this is part two on this backyard remodel that we're going to be doing. And today, as you can see, we're pumping in the foundation. Normally I like to wet set block inside of a concrete footing, but for this job it just would have been a little difficult for numerous factors. Like for one, this concrete did go off really fast. So I'm not even sure if I would have made it all the way without it getting too hard. I mean, you can literally see us walking on top of the footing right now, still just trying to get the middle form out. The main thing we're just trying to do is just smooth out the foundation top surface. So when it came the next day, we'd have a nice level surface to set our block on. Okay, so we poured out the foundation yesterday. We're just uh, bending some of the rebar back into place since it did move a little bit when we were pouring the foundation. We're also bringing all the block, all bond beam block, because there will be rebar in every single one of these courses all the way up, horizontally and vertically. But for right now, I'm gonna set levels for this block wall so we know where to start building everything. Jimmy, how is it over there? Is it is it kind of coming out pretty easy? Yeah. Oh, be careful though. There's the big fat wire in that dirt pile. We don't want to break that again. Have at t come back here. Okay. So, so somewhere in here, huh? It's like right in here. Okay. So you gotta be very careful. Okay. Yeah, that was definitely not fun having at t have to come out to the job site to fix a wire that I ended up breaking. That costed me a lot of money. I definitely don't have to pay that that price again so basically what we're gonna do from here on out though is we're gonna get our block established on each side of this footing then we'll end up running our string line and start laying our block from there but before we actually do start laying the block we need to make sure that we do have the right grade established so that once we start building up everything from that first course that will end up at the exact height we need because we are gonna be building a staircase and this block wall is gonna act as one extra step to the final of that staircase. So everything had to be pretty much money. That's why it was also gonna be very hard for us to wet set the first course when we were pouring out the footing. And then you can also see um, for the second course we did, we had to cut the block to a specific height. Because like I said, this block wall has to be money once we get to the very top. If you notice, we do have a smaller block right here. So what we're doing is we are calculating um, the courses we're gonna need and the height we need. So that's why we actually cut this block right here, the second course, down to three and a quarter to account for our height at the very top, which was 57 and a quarter. So that's why I ripped three and a quarter. And I did it for this bottom course so that this block will be covered. You won't even see this block. Because uh, this is all gonna be all dirt. All this is gonna be covered by dirt. You smell that from here, huh? We should probably fill this in with more dirt. Alright, I'm throwing it down. 
I'm throwing it down. These might look light when lifting them and putting them down, but doing this over and over and over for eight hours a day, your shoulders really start feeling it. You could strike the back too, just to practice until you get to the front. Yeah. You know, practice makes perfect. <clears throat> are so heavy and you gotta set them down really gently you know I just need to think, uh, go with the stuck though I'm gonna oh. talk I'm gonna talk to him about doing a decorative finish <clears throat> you know because like why wouldn't you want to do something like that you know uh, you're going this you wouldn't have big time on the foundation for you might as well go big time on the wall Okay guys, so just so you know, you, as you can see, we have built up our sides first on both ends. The reason we do that is so when we put our chicken feet down to pull the string line and we get it nice and tight, it doesn't try grabbing the blocks that are wet and going course by course and pull them out of place. So we kind of set the sides up, let them dry and work each course as we go up. And these courses will be rock solid to set our chicken feet on. So that's the whole point of that. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm really curious. Do you guys call this tool that holds the line for your block chicken feet or another uh, term or name in your area or region? And I'm kind of curious, like, why they even call it chicken feet? Tom, I'm going to need thicker beads. Thicker? Thicker beads, yeah, because I'm getting below the line. Oh, okay. And I'm not even touching them. I'm like, oh, well. well, better to be lower than high because we could build it up, right? Higher, because then we can push it down always better to be higher because if you're higher you can push it down on the ground up lower i can't go up Like stay like a half course lower so that I don't hit the tar with my trial ever. Oh, yeah. okay. Half course lower from my brick, huh? Yeah. Okay. Or just stay one course lower at all times. Okay. So we're almost at the top of this block wall now. And I had one of my guys, Shane, go to the backside to start waterproofing it. 
since it did call for that on the engineered plans also on the engineered plans we are going to be putting a drain a perforated drain in the back side of the retaining wall with some clean three quarter inch rock that'll help any of the water drain and get into that uh, pipe then we are also going to carry the drain from the back of the retaining wall to the front side and out to the front uh, of the house and so for the last course that we're going to be installing you will see us put in these steel rods into the block which are called purlins they basically connect the retaining wall and the staircase together once we do build the staircase and also you'll also see that the final course that we install is also another cut block because there is going to be a cap that goes on top of that cut block once we do grout and fill up the whole retaining wall with concrete all right so we just got uh through uh, the block wall inspection we're here the next day and uh we're gonna start mixing up some bags of concrete hand mixing this whole block wall pouring it in and uh you can see we got the purlin set up this is for the block or not the block wall but the, for the deck that's going to be going out right here for the staircase it's going to go right to here walkway coming down that way but yeah past the block wall inspection happy about that everything was looking really good in here now we just got to pour this guy out so we're going to go get more concrete bags bring them all to the back mix everything up pour it in and uh, that'll be our day now I'm sure a lot of you guys are also probably wondering why don't I just pump the concrete in instead of mixing everything by hand? Well, the simple answer is I wanted to give my guys more work. If I was to order a concrete truck and a pump, I basically wouldn't need any of my guys here on site today. It would just be me and the concrete pumper. Just pumping in the concrete, filling up the whole block wall. Yes, it would have been a lot easier doing it that way. But this way, my guys get an extra day of work and we all get a great workout. All right, so now that we have the block wall fully solid grouted, all we're gonna be doing now is laying in our four inch perforated pipe that has holes so that all the water that gets trapped in the back of this wall will be able to flow out of the back to the front of the house. Because these drains will be carried all the way to the front of the house. And there was one more final inspection before I did end up covering up the drain in the back and the front of the block wall footing. I did have to get one more inspection so that the city inspector could see that we solid grouted the block and that we put the drain in the back, carrying it out to the front. You can see us putting the pipe in the front of the block wall, getting ready to carry that drain to the front so this is basically the next day after we got through the city inspection we passed no problem now all we're going to be doing is back filling the block wall and sections so we're going to be filling up a little bit at a time and compacting as you just saw us doing right there also at the same time we're going to be waterproofing the back of the wall as we go up so i don't know what it is about this waterproofing material but it is so thick and gooey it is so hard to spread we're trying to find different techniques to spread it. It seemed like putting it on with a glove and then using a sponge worked the best way to spread it. But we were just struggling trying to figure out what is the best way to do this. Either way, we got the waterproofing on. So the final thing we're gonna be doing after this waterproofing material that we applied was we're just gonna be putting a two inch cap on top of the block wall and that will wrap up this block wall 
and that will wrap up part two of this large build series of this backyard so uh, i hope you guys enjoyed make sure you guys stay tuned for the next build series um, make sure to like share subscribe and comment any questions you may have and we'll be happy to answer all right have a great day